So today we're going to be talking about architecture again. We're going to be thinking like architects as we build a dream house. But the reason we're doing this is because the field of architecture uniquely combines the physics and engineering that need to go into a building to make it safe and functional and combines that with the human aspect of what do the people need for that building? What are, what are the practical needs? What do they want? And so all of those different aspects are uh, work together so nicely in architecture that it's a great activity to build these skills for our students for uh, whatever part of life they are in or headed to vocationally. So the prompt for this uh, for this activity is to design a structure where you would want to live or visit. And you can be extravagant or as simple as you like. And remember, the details don't have to be perfect. We're working with little wood blocks, and you may have a very complex idea for the sorts of things that you want to include or do. So you can represent the elements of the structure and the place you're building in very simple ways sometimes. You can work alone or you can work with someone, whatever you like. Props are allowed if you need to grab something that's around you or a little person or, or anything else that you want to add to it. You're welcome to do that. So these structures may range from very simple backyard layouts to exotic vacation resorts. Who knows where they might go with this? They can consider elements of a the place that make it appealing to them, things that they like to do. Do they like to uh, relax? Do they like to play sports? Do they like to swim? Maybe they'll want to make some of the surroundings include a swimming pool or a lake or a pond or something like that. And then how would you represent that with the Kiva planks? This is a fun activity because it's it's great for stimulating the imagination uh, and helping students to consider possibilities that might be a long shot in real life, but is still fun to consider. This one generally uh, takes a little bit more time than some of the others. So it takes a while to think about what it is they want to build. And then there's a lot of aspects to it. So uh, this one would be good if they have at least 15 minutes and maybe up to a half hour or so. Some of it, that again, depends on how many planks you have. If you're short on planks, then it becomes more helpful if people are working together. You can work that out however you you like. So after the building, each student should have the opportunity to tell about the structure they built. They can tell why they made it, why they chose this, or why they like this. And that's part of the fun and the interest when you're looking at something and suddenly someone describes uh, what this is and you say, oh, yes, that makes a lot of sense. That's really interesting the way you you're able to represent that. What are they learning as they're doing this? One of the things is innovation, finding ways to represent all the different aspects of this property with simple blocks, things like how do you make a round pool out of straight Kiva planks? It can be done. One of the important parts of this activity is the, dis the talking about it. It's such an important skill to be able to verbalize your thoughts and your processes, and they're, they're actually doing public speaking as they are doing this, and something that terrifies a lot of people. But if we're doing it in small, easy bites like this, people get more accustomed to actually telling the world what they're thinking about. They are converting their ideas into reality. The moment they first hear the prompt, their gears will start turning as they start thinking, well, what would that be? They're sorting through their, um, their ideas of what's a possibility and what isn't, and then they finally start to make it happen. And one other thing, there's a lot going on with, with this sort of activity. I'm just highlighting a few of these, but if they're working with someone else, anytime they're collaborating, they are starting to learn how to compromise their ideas. And how do they work that out? And that's all done in, in a very fun, easy, easy way as you're doing something that's so temporary and doesn't really matter. Oftentimes when people are working together on a common project, they're building friendships. And as they build and talk and work, they become more comfortable with each other, maybe planting the seeds for a new friendship. And if they're already friends, they, they just continue to build that with more common experiences together. These happen in virtually every activity you're doing with Kiva Planks, but they're learning about balance and physics and leverage and cantilevers and all these different things as they're building. Another thing that is happening is they're starting to understand the power of multiple iterations. They'll find that the first thing they try may not work, and they have to, to start over with something else, uh, a different way to get there. By the time they're finished, have a lot of new ideas for how they would do this if they did it again. And so starting to come to understand that the first time you do something 
it's not going to look the best that it can. You need to improve that. And that's a, a overall life concept as well. Most of the time, people don't get it the very best on the first try. That room for improvement that you didn't get it wrong, there are just other things you can do. And that's not an intimidating concept to uh, to think that you can you can maybe make it better next time. Before you knock these structures down, it would be great if you or the students are taking photos of them. It really helps document what has taken place in, during this activity. If they've invested a lot of time and thought and effort to this, they have a memory of this. It's something they can show others or their parents or whatever. A great follow-up activity for this would be the next time you get together, think about the structure that you built last time and let's build it again and let's see how it improves the second time you built it. Architecture is such a complex uh, subject. People go to school for and spend a lot of time learning about it, and we're just doing small little slivers of it here. So uh, we'll be back and do more things with architecture another time. So thank you for joining me, and we'll see you next time.